Hello, fine people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about the idea of sunblock with plants. So this came up when I was talking to my friend Bobby from the Mighty Mustache channel. If you guys didn't watch our video where we did the pepper plants together, then be sure to check that out. Anyways, he had a pepper plant that had a sunburn and he was like, well, how did my one plant sunburn but none of my other plants did? And I started thinking about sunblock with plants, which is an actual thing that some plants have. So some plants are better with sun than others. Um, example being succulents, obviously much better with higher levels of sun, but even within certain pepper plants or tomato plants, you have certain varieties that do better with sun than others. So I started thinking about it and then I started looking at my plants in my vicinity and thinking, you know what, it would just be awesome to talk about the different forms of sunblock that plants have and just kind of all that fun stuff. So this is more common in house plants. So I'll be using a rubber tree as an example and then a succulent as an example for this. However, it would be seen on some garden plants as well. So keep this in mind when you're walking around the greenhouses this spring or just in the yard in general. Well, there are two different types of sun blocks and the first one being farina and the second one being epicuticular wax. Now, they are usually referred to as the same thing. However, that is not the case. They are different from one another, <laughs> quite a bit different than one another. So we will be jumping into the epicuticular wax. I'm just gonna call it epi wax for the rest of this video to save my jaws but ep, epic wax on the outside of plants is probably the more common of the two. So this epic wax that we've seen is very commonly seen on the outside of fruits, for example, and vegetables. So when I think of this, I think of zucchinis, cucumbers, apples, and they have that white dusty coating type film on them. This is the sunblock for the plant. And I actually find this also on my rubber tree plant that I have in my office. So this plant is in a lot of sun. And so therefore it is making its own epic wax to coat its leaves as a form of sunblock. So this sunblock is a combination of different hydrophobic compounds that actually help keep water out and disease out and pests out, but also keep water in. And that is why it is commonly seen on leaves and then on actual fruits themselves. So because the wax is on the outside, it acts as an anti-climbing surface. It acts as a um, surface where water can't penetrate. So therefore things like fungi and bacteria can't make a home and it just leaves an overall sheen on it. So when you see this at the grocery store on an apple, people generally think that it is an unnatural wax that has been sprayed on the plant, which may be the case in some cases. However, it's not always the case. It's actually probably most likely this natural wax that we find on the outside of fruits and vegetables. Now it can be rubbed off, but if we rub that wax off, it generally takes a long time or it just may not at all come back. So if you are in an area where your plant is in very, very high sun or your fruits and vegetables are in high sun and you see this white bluish film all over your produce or whatever the case is, don't panic. It's not a fungi. It's not a mold. It's not a mildew. It is actually sunblock. And the best way to test to know if it's sunblock is if you wipe it and you check your finger and there's nothing on your finger because this is literally a wax that is produced by the epidermis of the plant. It is colorless and because it's colorless, you won't be able to tell it's on your finger. Now, if the outside of that epidermis epic wax is dirty, obviously you're going to see dirt, but for the most part, you shouldn't. With that being said, if you live in Canada, and this may be just my own mind that thinks this, and you don't 
say you live in Canada and you don't have um, grow lights on your plant or you're going through a winter that is very cloudy and not very nice out or you have the ability to move your plant around you maybe want to move the plant into a shadier spot it is arguably my point of view in your best interest to wipe that wax off especially if it's an indoor plant because it does act as an ultraviolet barrier and it doesn't allow the UV light to penetrate to the leaf as intensely as it normally would. So don't hesitate from giving it a wipe off when you see it piling up. I personally do that with my rubber tree plant, especially in the winter, because he's not being grown under um, grow lights or anything. He's just in a very natural area. So the more common of the two or the one that you always hear about on the internet is farina. So farina is something that is actually emitted through glandular structures on the plant, generally through microscopic hair-like looking follicles. And it is a crystal that is laid on the top of the leaf. Now, this stuff is exclusively found on succulents for the most part. Not all succulents have this, but quite a few succulents have this. So this is not repairable. If you wipe this stuff off, it may not come back. If it does come back, it's gonna take a load of time to get there. And because we want our succulents under high intense light at all times, it is not in our best interest to remove it unless again, it's winter time and this is just me. This is my crazy kicking in. I wipe mine off. I haven't this spring because it's springtime, so I'm leaving it. But generally, in the wintertime, I wipe it off. Again, I'm not growing into grow lights with these. Full disclosure. But anyways, if you wipe it off, it's probably not going to come back, unfortunately. However, it serves the exact same purpose. So it is hydrophobic. It repels water. It's what causes the bubbles or the, the water droplets to accumulate on the top of a succulent, but it also keeps water in. It repels insects, it repels disease, and everything else in between. But it's also very pretty, and it's what gives every uh, all the succulents that night, nice little muted look. Just fun fact. However, not all succulents have it. A huge majority of them do. This is not the hairy stuff, though. It's not the fuzz you find on them. That's a totally different ball of wax. Pun intended, kind of. I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know if you've noticed this stuff before and if you immediately freaked out thinking that it was some sort of mold or mildew. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on Instagram or check out the blog for more free printable stuff. I will talk to you guys next time.